and I hope this video finds everybody doing well. Today I'm going to do a lesson out of the middle schoolers book that we had been working on before COVID started. It is the book called Acts in Action by David Banning. Uh, I don't know if you guys took them home or if they're still at the church. If you would like to take them with, with you the next time you're in the building, that's fine. If you want to purchase one, I think you can still get them on the internet. Um, we are on lesson seven. If you remember, we left off working on pamphlets. You were supposed to be creating a pamphlet that you could use to help you teach other people about God and Jesus and how to become a Christian. If you still have those at home, they would be helpful in these upcoming lessons that I'm going to do online for you. So lesson seven is called, Am I Ready to Share the Message? So it is about whether or not you think you can teach other people about God's word. Short answer, yes, you can. Okay, no arguments. Um, the lesson starts off with a case study. It is about a boy who uh, had a friend who died. Um, and it really hurt him that his friend died and that he had never told him about God and the things he needed to do to get to heaven. And it really weighed on him spiritually. Uh, so he wasn't sure, though, that he could have done it or done a good enough job. He was thinking things like, what if I made a mistake? What if I say the wrong thing? What if they ask me a question that I can't answer? Am I qualified to teach the gospel? Which that question is a little more tricky than some of the other ones. But overall, what we wanna know is, are some of those your feelings? Do you think those things when you have your friends that you're out with? Um, or have you ever felt this way in the past if you're some of the older teenagers? Uh, the big thing is, is, is that fear stopping you? Is it keeping you from telling somebody what you know about the Bible or about God? And if it is stopping you, what can we do to overcome that fear? Because it is important. It is commanded for us to share the gospel with others. Um, so let's see. The next thing it says, are there times when we're not ready to be telling others about Christ? And there definitely are some times and some situations that maybe you don't know enough. And you could do harm. And so that's kind of the balancing act. Could you harm more than do good? And that's one of those yes and no answers. So whatever, whichever way you're feeling, you could be right. Everything's going to come down to situations, circumstances, things you know, things they know, things you're going through, things they're going through. Um, but Hebrews 5.12 says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. So when we look at that scripture, what they were being told was they should have been able to teach by now. And I'm not saying all of us are ready to be teachers, being, being ready to teach, comes at all different stages, all different ages. Uh, I know some of the teenagers, some of the high schoolers, we do have help teach our little kids because teaching is a skill. Some people are good at it. Some people, that's not what they're good at. They might be better at sitting down and keeping someone company or sending cards or things like that, getting a meal ready for somebody, helping the orphans and the widows. But teaching is something we should all be able to do to a certain extent 
So we need to keep that in mind for, I know some of you already are Christians, so you should be thinking, what can I do to help someone else become a Christian? And obviously teaching is one of those things. A question that I know some of you probably struggle with is, how much should I know before sharing with others? And I think most of you know that I am a nanny for a living, and the three-year-old can tell people. I mean, she's three and maybe not many people listen, but maybe they do. She knows that we tell her stories or that we sing songs with her, and then she shares them with the people she knows or that she's talking to. And whether you mean to or not, that's teaching. And I know I've said that in this class before. Even if you don't mean to, you could be teaching and setting an example for someone or something. I know I've told you those kids in those younger classes look up to you guys. They worship you guys. They want to be just like you guys. Okay, that's teaching them. So if you're sitting in the church pew during the sermon or during communion and you're cracking up laughing or picking on somebody and moving around, then those little kids see that and they think, well, if they're doing it, then it must be okay because their mom and dad would have told them better than that. And I know all of your parents have taught you better than that. It's just something that as you grow up, you have to keep in mind. I know even I do sometimes. I can catch myself daydreaming at times when I should be paying attention. And there's different things that work for different people like taking notes or using a Bible to look up every scripture the preacher says or drawing pictures of what the preacher's talking about. All these things help you keep your mind focused on what it's supposed to be. It's just a matter of learning how to do it. So the first thing that I want you to take a second and do, feel free to hit the pause button if you need to, okay? Because I really do want you guys to think. I know it's different that I can't sit here and talk with you and stop the lesson when I need to. So if you need to pause so that you can think, please just hit that pause button. But I want you to make a list. You can write it down, make it in your head. I'm, I'm not going to ask for it, but make a list of what you think you need to know or you need to understand in order to share the gospel with others. So what's something that you think you need to know? It could be something as simple as what is the Bible? Who is God? Who is Jesus? Can you answer those types of questions? Are those the questions you need to be able to answer to be able to share the message with other people? Okay, so think about it. You can look up scriptures if you would like to, to help back up your answers. But that's something that you need to keep in mind when you're asking yourself, Am I ready to share the gospel? The next question is, is being concerned about being asked a question that you don't know the answer to a valid reason to not go into a Bible study or to talk to somebody about God? So should it keep you from studying with other people? What should you do when you're confronted with questions that you can't answer? Okay, and I think, at least from when I have taught you guys, you know the answer to that. Because I don't claim to know all the answers. I know you have asked me questions before in class, and I wish somebody was here because I would tell you, ask you right now, what do I tell you? I tell you, I will give you the answer the next time we come back to church, Lord willing. Okay? And I will go home and I will do my research. I will look things up. Or I will go ask somebody that I think knows the answer. Okay? And I will study with them so that I can come back the next time, which usually you guys have forgotten your question by then, but that's okay. 
and I will give you the answer, okay? We don't expect each other to be perfect. We're here to help each other. We're help, here to help each other learn, okay? And it's the same way when you're going into a Bible study with somebody else. They might think you have all the answers, but please don't portray that you do because nobody does. We're not Jesus. We're not God. We don't know all the answers, and that's okay as long as you're willing to do the work to find the answers, okay? It's a new world out there from when I was in school. Okay, you guys have your phones, your tablets, the internet. I didn't have all that stuff before. I had to look it up in a Bible or a thesaurus or a dictionary to find the answers. You guys really just have to type it into Google and pretty much an answer will come up for you. So that's all you have to really be able to do is do some research. The next question, if I don't know enough to teach others about Christ, what should I do about it? That's an interesting question. I'm not sure that any of my middle schoolers have that problem, but if maybe you're not in our congregation and you're watching this video, the answer to me is quite simple, then you need to be studying more, okay? If you don't know enough to take a test at school, then what do you have to do? You have to go home and you have to study, okay? That's the only way we learn things in the Bible can you learn a lot by just going to church and listening to the preacher? Sure, you can learn a lot that way, but you will learn more by going and studying for yourself, okay? Because it'll be something you're interested in. And if you can find somebody to help you that maybe knows a little bit more than you and is willing to sit down and study with you, that'd be even greater because then you'll have somebody to bounce ideas off of with, okay? How can I overcome that problem? I know studying sounds boring, Nobody wants to hear the teacher say, you guys need to go home and study, but it's worth it in the end, okay? What's our end goal, okay? My students all know the answer to that. The end goal is heaven. We all want to be there. We all want to get there. This will help you get there. The more you study, the more you know, the more you can share, okay? Um, what are some practical steps I should take? I'm, I would, if you're not already in a study habit, I personally would recommend starting small. If it's something as simple as one scripture a day, okay? I have a Bible app on my phone and it every day sends me an email with one, sometimes two, maybe at the most three verses. Three verses, that's all it is, once a day. And I read those verses and I think about them and I try to think about how I can apply them to my life. And that's just one habit that's easy for me to do. Okay. And then I sit and I work on my lessons for you guys. So there's another thing, you know, I, back before COVID, I had twice a week. Okay. I've, obviously I've gotten away from that a little bit since COVID started, but it is, a great habit so even as though you're the students and I'm the teacher you guys could be going home and preparing for the lesson for the next day you guys we have the books you know which verses we're gonna use you can be looking at them ahead of time so that you're ready to ask maybe any questions you might have or just to gain the knowledge so that you could be the teacher in the classroom if we really needed you to be okay then the lesson moves on with this same guy who had the friend die and it upset him and it moves on to his friend that died's girlfriend so his friend that died had a girlfriend and him and her they're both kind of struggling with their friend's death as would any of us i don't know if any of you guys have had friends die um, i already have people my age. I had people die when I was in middle school in my class and you guys are in middle school right now. So I was already losing people at your guys' ages. So when it all boils down to was this girlfriend asked him how was she how was he coping with this death and what he could do. And his answer was pretty simple. Um, 
he mentioned that his parents were helpful and the people from his church were helpful, which I am sure and I hope all of you guys know that if you're going through something and you need some help, you need some encouragement, your parents, your grandparents, any of your church family, we would be more than willing to help. Um, and then he also said, I've been reading my Bible more and praying. So we can go back to those other, the, the question about the steps. What else could we do? We already covered the Bible reading. How about the praying? Are you praying every day? Okay. Something easy that I teach my kids that I help raise. We pray before every meal. We pray before nap time, before bedtime, just to get them in the habit of thanking God for the things we're grateful for, asking him to watch over because my kids have family members that are all over this country that don't live with us. Um, and just show God that we're appreciative of everything that he does for us, even though sometimes we don't get our own way, which is not the point of prayer point of prayer is for us to acknowledge God and the things that he's done for us we can ask God for things but remember God is going to give us things as he wants them not as we want them um, so this girlfriend she got curious okay and so and she asked him for help and, you know, told him, you know, hey, I didn't go to church much. I don't know a whole lot. And so now this is giving this guy a chance to kind of make up for the fact that he didn't talk to his friend about God. Now he can talk to the, his girlfriend about it. So they set up a study date. And so now he's all nervous about this Bible study that he's going to have with her because he's afraid, you know, he won't say the right thing. He won't answer her questions. All those things that we covered in the beginning of this lesson. So the work for this lesson, okay, this is, I know this is going to be super difficult, especially with us not being together, but what they want you to do for this lesson now is to prepare an outline for this Bible lesson. So you're gonna pretend like you have this friend, you all have friends, This you don't have to pretend, this could be real, okay? That you're gonna have a Bible study with them. Okay, they wanna learn about God, you're gonna teach them, okay? So you're gonna create this outline. I'm gonna show you the book and hopefully it'll you'll be able to read the scriptures and stuff off of this page and then you can just press pause when I show the page so that way you can take down all the scriptures so you can go look them up and that will help you prepare a Bible study that you could have with one of your friends and feel free to try it okay if you have a friend you could do it over zoom you don't have to be in person get on zoom get on Google meets get on Facebook whatever you guys are on and study with them look up the scriptures together read them talk about what they mean okay so the book here oh, let me get my finger off the verses here's some verses okay and then let me check my notes and see if there was anything else i wanted to say about this lesson okay i think that was it so if you want to take notes or write it down, I would love to see your guys' outlines. You can ask your parents or your grandparents, whomever it is bringing you to church for my email. It is in the church directory and feel free to email them to me and I will look at them and get back to you. We, guys, we can set up Zoom meetings or Google Meets with you and me and whomever you want. And I hope you guys all have a great day. Bye.